You heard last Friday in episode 74, why I don't use ChatGPT. Then you heard me chat with David Foreman on Monday in episode 75, and he opened my eyes on some ways that I could use ChatGPT. Today, I'm going to tell you how I am now using ChatGPT in my podcast and why it feels all right and even exciting. Welcome back to Podcast Launchpad. I'm Kelly. I know it seems like it's been only five days since I told you that I'm not using ChatGPT. So how can I have changed my mind in that short a time and be able to put out this episode about I, how I am now using ChatGPT? Well, I tend to schedule my episodes several weeks in advance. I recorded the episode about why I don't use ChatGPT at the beginning of February. I interviewed David Foreman in mid-February, and I'm recording this episode just a couple of days before releasing it on March 15th. Friday, you'll hear me interview John Mendez in episode 77 on how podcasters can use ChatGPT and other AI. I recorded that one on March 2nd. So more than a month has passed since I actually said that I don't use ChatGPT, even though to you, it sounds like it's just been five days. After chatting with David Foreman, I thought about not releasing that episode on why I don't use ChatGPT, but I decided to publish it along with this update episode to be fully transparent. I wanted to show you that, yes, I have an open mind. <laughs> I also wanted to discuss why I'm still not using ChatGPT to write my scripts, but I am using it in other ways. You heard from David, and you'll hear from John on Friday, that we should be using ChatGPT and other AI as assistants, if we're going to use them at all. We shouldn't be relying on them 100% to create for us or letting them control us. I still stand by my original statements in episode 74 that I am precious about my words and my voice. I don't want AI writing anything for me, such as my podcast scripts or emails. I totally understand when other people use AI that way. Writing is really hard for most people, so I really get it. It's essential that you rewrite what the AI gives you to make it your own words and your own voice. You'll hear more about that from John on Friday. He also shares some tools that can help you make what ChatGPT gives you to sound less like AI. He talks about Quillbot, for example, which will rewrite what ChatGPT spits out. Now, even after you use Quillbot, I still suggest rewriting it to make the copy sound like you. ChatGPT and Quillbot may use words that you don't normally use, and they may use sentence structure that doesn't sound like you, even when that sentence structure is totally grammatically correct. So if I'm not using ChatGPT to write my scripts, how am I using ChatGPT on my podcast? The biggest way I'm using ChatGPT is to help me come up with questions to ask my guests. Most guests don't give me suggest suggested questions to ask them. When I find guests through Podmatch, they do have a list of suggested questions in there. But the questions tend to be fairly generic. They tend not to apply to our specific topic, so I can't really use those. I have to come up with all the questions myself. Now, I'm used to doing that, coming up with questions on my own. We've done that at Geek Girl Soup for the past 11 plus years when we interview guests. I did it at Marketing Chat for over a year, and I've been doing it here for the past five months. So I am used to coming up with my own questions. But it's time consuming, especially when I'm not the expert on that topic. I mean, you don't know what you don't know. And when you don't know something, you don't know all the possible questions that you can ask, right? Remember in school and 
you'd be stumped on something and the teacher would say, what questions do you have? And you're like, I don't know. I just don't understand this, right? You don't know what you don't know. I always research my guests and the topic pretty thoroughly ahead of time. As you know, my interviews are not in the style of bullet point question, answer, question, answer. I have real conversations with my guests. That means I have to know something or a lot about the topic. At least I have to know what to ask them, and I still need to know stuff to be able to have a conversation with them. If I don't already have fairly deep knowledge about the topic, that's a lot of research to do. Even when I do have deep knowledge about a topic, my questions may not be your questions. So in both of these cases, not knowing and knowing are why ChatGPT has become so helpful to me. When I interviewed John Mendez, again, coming out this Friday, I asked ChatGPT a couple of questions, or when I was getting ready to interview him, I asked ChatGPT a couple of questions. So first I asked it, what are some common questions that people have about using ChatGPT for podcasting? It gave me five really interesting questions. I wouldn't have expected a few of them. For example, it spat out, how can ChatGPT help me with editing and post-production of my podcast episodes? I didn't know that ChatGPT could help in those arenas at all. So apparently, ChatGPT can transcribe, suggest edits, suggest sound improvements, and suggest music for your show. <laughs> I had no idea. Now, the other interesting question that ChatGPT gave me was, can ChatGPT provide insights and analytics on my podcast's performance and, audio enga and audience engagement? So I asked that question back to ChatGPT, and I learned that ChatGPT can't do those things directly. It just suggests ways that you can find insights and analytics on your podcast performance and audio engagement. And that makes total sense. You know, how is ChatGPT going to access your show's analytics without going into your podcast hosting provider, going into Chartable or Podkite or going into Apple Podcasts? It, it can't do that. You know, no one can except you. So total sense. So I asked that question first to help me understand what y'all may be thinking about and to give me some background. I already had my own perspective, opinions, and background to bring to the conversation, but it's essential to bring the listener's perspective and questions to an interview. And ChatGPT was a great help for me to do that. So then I asked ChatGPT, chat GPT. It's hard to keep saying that. <laughs> I asked it, I'm going to be interviewing someone on my podcast about how podcasters can use chat GPT for their podcasts. What questions should I ask him? Now, I won't list those questions here. You'll hear some of them in the interview on Friday. But chat GPT gave me 10 really great questions. Now, some of them I was going to ask anyway, and some of them I hadn't thought of before. Now, I ended up not using all of them, and the ones that I did use, I broke down and rewrote in my own voice. All right, the second way that I've been using ChatGPT in my podcast is I ask it for commonly asked questions on the topics of my episodes, even my solo episodes. So this is like when I asked it for common questions people have about using it for their podcast. For an upcoming episode, I asked it, what are some common questions that podcasters have about using a call to action in their podcast? ChatGPT gave me some good responses. There wasn't much that was new to me, but it was still a great exercise to go through. As I said earlier, this show is for you. Your show is for your listeners. I need to focus on your questions and concerns. You need to focus on your listeners' questions and concerns. If ChatGPT can help me do that, or help you do that, then we should be happy to use it. Now, Answer the Public and Google can also help with that. 
when you Google your episode topics, you can scroll down and look at people also search down toward the bottom. You'll get the exact queries that people are, that people are typing in. With Answer the Public, you type in just one or two keywords. Then you get tons of questions that people ask. So you can use a combination of these three tools to help you understand what questions your audience has, what topics they're looking for, and what knowledge gaps they have. So the third way I've been using ChatGPT is to ask for episode title suggestions. Now, I have talked about episode titles in episode 68 and in episode 47. And I've mentioned it in several other episodes aside from those two title-specific episodes. So I have a lot to say about episode titles. You know that I love using questions as titles for my solo episodes. And clear titles are always better than clever titles, but clear and clever is awesome. The main things are, you want your titles to be searchable that or discoverable, that is they need keywords. Your titles need to tell exactly what the episode is about and they need to grab the listener's attention. So I've asked ChatGPT for suggestions a few times. It tends to give me 10 suggested titles. Now, a risk of using any of these titles verbatim is that someone else could possibly get the same results and use the same title. Not that this can't happen with the title that we come up with on our own, but if a chat GPT title seems kind of quirky and keyword rich, like almost too good to be true, it would definitely be weird for more than one podcast to use the same title. So like with everything you get from chat GPT, I recommend tweaking the title when you get one that just seems fabulous. Again, Answer the Public is also great for coming up with titles that use questions or question words, such as how and why. Whatever you do with ChatGPT, however you use it, I'm going to reiterate that you do not, sorry, that you do, <laughs> you do your own digging and research. ChatGPT can give you false information. It is known for doing this, for giving you wrong information. As I say in episode 74, as David and I discuss, and as John and I discuss in those respective episodes. So don't take what ChatGPT gives you, like the quote facts it gives you, and repeat those without vetting that information, okay? Definitely tweak all of the text it gives you to fit your style of writing and your voice. Personally, I would rather read or hear, you know, if you're having if you're using ChatGPT to help you with your scripts, I would rather read or hear not so great writing or speech that's in your own unique style than quote better writing or speech that's in a boring AI style. I want your voice, even if the grammar or style isn't totally correct. Though you can write on your own and then use chat GPT or some other software just to correct your grammar. But still, if your style includes quirky grammar, quirky word uses, usage, then I am totally down for that. I want you. Yes, we want to write and speak to be understood, but we don't all have to write and speak just alike. E.E. E. Cummings is one of my favorite poets. He had a totally unique style and awkward grammar. Remember his poems from like when you were in school? And if you haven't read him, go check him out. Just amazing. Now, I am not saying that you should speak like E.E. E. Cummings or like Yoda. But if you've got some 
thing that's all yours, use it. Do not let ChatGPT water you down. In informational podcasts, most people are sharing lots of the same information. What makes our shows unique is us, our voices, our styles, and the way we say what we say. So tune in on Friday to hear what John and I chat about. There's more great stuff there that David Foreman and I did not discuss. So that is it for today. Be sure to follow so you don't miss a single episode, and I will see you next time on Podcast Launchpad.